Hey, what's up guys? The one and only here, and I'm back with another video, and today in this video, we are going to be doing a review slash comparison on my favorite Star Wars bad guy. And, um, for those of you who uh, follow me on Instagram, you know I've had, um, I've had this guy for a while, but, um, I'd like to get this out there. Uh, it's... He does come with a base for little spoilers of, um, some of, the, some of his accessories. But, I don't have the part that holds him up. Um, uh, we'll get into details later on. Let's just, uh, let's just hop into the review. Alright, so for starters, for those of you who do not know who this is, this is General Grievous from the, um, Star Wars franchise. This is the, uh, movie version of him. I'm, forgive me, but I don't know what episode. I think it's episode three. I don't know. Don't, um, don't kill me for that. But anyways, so, um, yeah, uh, if you look at him, he's got, like, all the movie detailing and stuff, you know, the way his rib cages and stuff, the way his legs are, his arms, and everything. Speaking of, uh, speaking of, let's, um, let's hop on to the accessories for this guy. Well, you're seeing one already. He comes with his, um, his little cape here, red on this side, black on the other. Now, I'm not, I'm not really happy with the way this cape is made. If you look at it, you can tell it's very fibrous. And, uh, it just doesn't really look all that right. You can see some of the black that bleeds through the red. In fact, well, I'm not sure if it's coming up on camera, but in person you can see. And then on top of that, like, it would be nice if this was an all, like, cloth cape. Except for maybe, like, the collar or whatever, where it would, uh, sit on his neck. But, um, it's not. It's this weird fibrous material, and then on top of that is, um, a ugly looking hard plastic piece that just sits on his neck. So I'm not too happy about that, and like I said before, he is supposed to come with a stand. This is the base to it. It would just be this black bit that just comes up to his, like, it's, it's really short. If anything, it comes up to, like comes up to like here or whatever when he's standing up straight which it's actually supposed to be up here for him to hold so he has to be hunched over for it to actually hold him up and even then it didn't even do a good job at that because it's it's too small and I mean I get it you know for a guy like for a guy like this you know he's a big guy whatever he's got all these accessories and stuff so trying to keep like price value down or whatever but yeah could have done a little bit better and um actually i forgot <laughs> packaging all right it's got it comes in this this really nice box here or whatever it's got some artwork of him on the front you know general grievous down at the bottom um bandai in the right corner you can see it says 112 scaled i think uh yeah, 112 skilled model kit. Star Wars up at top. You know, what you'd normally expect. Down here, it shows you some like um, some of the features and accessories that the figure comes with. And whatnot. Here on the side, some more artwork of him right there. Some, um, some stuff. Here at the top. Shows you a picture of him and everything. Backside, just black, just black. And um, when you open this box up, it ju you can see that it just comes with a bunch of like spruce that the parts would be attached to. You would just cut those off and um, follow the instructions to build him, which are right here. The instructions. For those of you who are fans of Lego or something, this is a fairly satisfying thing. Until you make it to the neck. Oh, uh, here it shows you the stand. It's really not that good. But, um, it's really straightforward. You just look at the pictures, put the parts together. Kind of like Lego, but... Except, um... Well, you would have to follow the numbers. Because, like, each of the spruits has a... Has a letter on it. And each part has a number next to it. When you, uh, cut it off. So, um... Do not... Ever... 
cut all the pieces out first. Don't do that. You'll just mess yourself up. Um, one thing that this kit comes with, well, well, first of all, if you look at Grievous himself, like, I don't really have much of the, um, stickers or decals on him, but, uh, you know, it does come with those. I only have, um, the chest bit, uh, those neck things, I sure can see them. Little stripes on the neck, not the neck, the chest, and the little lines on the neck. That's it. The eyes themselves are not, they're not stickers or decals. They're actually a whole separate piece that you have in there. Oh, one thing before I pop the head off, it's kind of weird, is um, his neck can, or his head can almost be like, uh, you, you can almost change the elevation of his head. It's kind of weird. But anyways, that's, the head's just on like a small little ball joint here. Just pop that off. Um, just wanna, um, I'll take part of the head so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Alright guys, well, as you can see, I, um, removed some of the parts of the head. One thing I would like to note is that this model kit, well, it's that. It's a model kit. It's not really, it's not meant to be a toy or anything. It technically is an action figure, but it's really not meant to be, like, messed around with. You can, like, pose it and stuff, but it's really meant for display. And so, um, comes with a ton of small pieces, as you can tell, to make up the details and everything. And a lot of these pieces are made of, um, they're made of, like, a harder plastic. So they are very fragile. And as you can see here with this ear or whatever, um, so when I was building this guy, it, uh, it fell out of my hand, and when I went to go catch it, I, um, I had it like that, and I, just with the slightest bit of force, broke it in half, and so you can see that I, um, sloppily glued it together, so you can see that it did break, so just, just getting that out there, this guy is very fragile, ton of small pieces that are very fragile. But for the most part, it's a fairly solid, um, solid bit. But as you can see, um, like I said before, the details are made up of a bunch of smaller pieces. You can see, uh, this tiny bit. I'm not sure if you guys even, some of you guys probably haven't even noticed, but, um, he's got like a little, a little thing that just goes around his, um, like around his face or whatever. It's not really that noticeable at first, but. And then here to make, uh, you can see there, here's his face mask or whatever. And here you can see that his eyes are indeed a separate piece from, from his head or whatever. From his face mask. And his eyes are actually made up of two separate pieces if I can get this off to show you guys. Alright, so here's his head. And then here are his eyes. Or whatever. This thing with focus. There. These are two separate pieces. You have this bit. Right here. That make up like the skin around his eyes. And then you have these bits. that, Or this bit. That are his eyes. His actual eyes. His eyeballs or whatever. You can see that it's dual molded. You got the yellow bit at the bottom making up his um eyeball, I guess. And then the it's not really black, it's like a gunmetal making up his pupil. This would focus. But yeah, so um there's that. Like so um you can just by taking apart the head, you can clearly see the, uh, the, like, this guy is built up of tons of small pieces. So it's not really meant for, like, young kids or whatever. And on top of that, you have the decals or whatever, the water decals, that you use to, um, apply further, further detail line. De further detailing! That just dropped. But so the idea of these is that you would, um, you would cut them out, into small sections and you would apply water to it and then with like a blade or you would transfer it onto like the part that they go onto 
and from there, I, I've never really used these, so I'm not 100% sure about how exactly they work, but um, if you don't use decals or whatever, if you don't like them, you have an alternative to those with uh, stickers, which obviously would not last as long. As you can see, I used a few of them, only the ones that I could uh, apply. But, personally, I'm not the type of guy who would ever use either or. I prefer to just paint the detailing on myself. Which sometimes could be good and sometimes could be bad. But, if you look at the model, you can see that it, um, it's very clean. He's very clean. He doesn't have any dirt or grime or damage or wear or any of that on him. So... He kind of looks toyish, which isn't really good. Right, but um, yeah, for the accessories, it comes with the base that Cape already showed you. And then he comes with his, um, his four lightsabers, two of them in blue, as shown here, and two of them in green. And now, um,. If you look at them, you can see that neither that none of the four lightsabers actually share a hilt. They're all different. And um, now the blades for most of them are compatible, but with this one right here, you, the blade is not compatible with any of them because it has a a slanted um, slot and, and whatnot. But yeah, so it comes with um, the stand, the cape, the lightsabers I just showed you. And then he comes with his alternate arms, because his arms do not, they, uh, they can't be, like, you know, placed together and then separated. You can't do that with him. Other Grievouses you probably can, but not this one. He, he actually has just two completely separate arms for those, which just, uh, they just attach with his peg into a, um, little slot that he has in here. Just uh, go in that hole in there, which has a um, has um like a rubber, like a like a rubber uh, socket in there to create the friction to keep these parts from moving. Although it doesn't really do too much of an amazing job at that, but whatever, it doesn't matter. You can pose each arm the um whichever way you want. And um another thing. To note is uh, that this Grievous, as I was assembling him, uh, here in his wrist, he has tiny ball joints in there. So at first, when you like attach the hand onto the little bit, you're going to hear like a snap. And you, it uh, at first, when I heard that snap, I thought that it broke, but it turned, but I realized that it uh, was just a ball joint. Which, it, that is an extremely tiny ball joint. Like, that ball joint is tiny. This would focus. But, um, he also has ball joints up here in his, like, elbows. Uh, both on these, uh, the, the, the single arm and the double, which... A hinge here would have been okay as well, but, I mean, I guess the ball joint is appreciated. Very concerning, given how small it is, but, um, it works. So, um, speaking of which, we might as well go over articulation. So, um, on the split arms, he's got a rotation up here in the, um, up here in the shoulder, which isn't really supposed to rotate, but I guess it counts. Then he's got a ball joint for each shoulder. I already said shoulder, so this is kind of confusing. But um, then he also has a like a hinge at the shoulder as well. That's the third time I said shoulder, so this is a very confusing figure or model. Then down here at the elbow, he's got a tiny ball joint, which you know you can rotate 360 at. Bend 90 degrees, straighten that out. Then he's got a rotate, um, just a, just a swivel at every wrist. 
on the split arms. But so uh, this guy can bend his arms way past 90. Bring him at an angle into his side or into him. Technically, you can rotate these arms 360, but at the same time, you can't, depending on which joint you use. Or which shoulder you consider to be a shoulder. It's it's really confusing, because he's kind of got like three shoulders. Um, each arm can be um, rotated and posed individually, so they don't really hinder each other. You can get this guy into like a... Um, a lightsaber swinging pose if you wanted to, you know, where he just, like, hunched over, he's got his lightsabers in his hand, he's walking forward at Kenobi, he's just spinning his lightsabers, or whatever. But yeah, then he's got that ball joint in the neck that I already showed you, which you can kind of, like, if you look closely, you can see that happen. No, but, um... You can like bring his, you can lower his head up and down that little, if you see that. It, um, it is a fairly loose connection because it's really, there's nothing there, like really actually holding it in there. Unlike the uh, shoulders where there's like rubber inserts, there's none of that in the head, which I wish, th wish there was. But, um, if you have just at the end, it's just super loose, so if you can just, if you just lower that a little bit, you, it adds more friction, but it also hinders the articulation. A bit. Oh, his hand, his hand popped off. Uh, he's got a ball joint down here in his waist, which is, which it was completely unexpected, but um, it works fairly well. You can hunch him over with it. Spin 360 around. He's got ball joints at his um, at his hips, which allows him to kick his leg. About that far forward. Depending on how you pose it. About that far back, which is a really awkward angle. Whoop. It's popped off. But if you're going straight backwards, just about that far. Which really isn't that far. But like, this guy has a ton of articulation. Double hinged knees. So he can touch... Well, no, I guess not. I was about to say you can touch his hock to the back of his thigh, but not. Um, it's got a hinge down here at what I would call his hock, I guess. Then he's got a a ball joint and a hinge at his ankle. He's got a ball joint in like his actual foot, and like a slight hinge up here because of the way it's connected. And then for his normal arm or whatever, you know, just ball joint up at the shoulder. Allows his arms to go out about that far. Spin about 360, you know, usual things. Turn like that. It's the 90 degree hinge at the elbow. Unlike these guys, because these guys have... They have a 90 degree hinge, but they can also spin around and everything. Then he's got the ball joint at the wrist, unlike the other arm. And a swivel. But, um, yeah, that's about it for articulation on this guy. And, um... I already showed you the accessories. Now, one thing that I really do like about this guy is um his chest area. If I go ahead and take some parts off for you, you can see what I'm getting at. And this is another reason why I would love, to, or why I love to paint um, instead of using decals, because there are no decals or stickers for this part of him. Which would normally be nice for um for uh, people who don't really paint, but honestly, I'm just taking advantage of this. Uh, if you take these bits off, um, little chest bits on the back piece, it exposes his um chest cavity which if you look in there you can see that he actually has organs within there you can see that they are separate pieces you can see that um he's got his organs in there and stuff sorry about the glare let me see if i can fix that well that doesn't really help 
But yeah. It's really nice, because, like, um, all this is, like, actually separate. It's, you built all this separately, so you can really see, like, the organs up close and everything. And then you got this, like, shell or whatever. Trans green shell. It looks really nice and everything, but, um, on the rest of the figure, you know, he's got, like, no wear, no nothing, so. Eh. You get some detail, you get some detail. But while losing others at the same time, so as far as details go, he's, I guess you could say he's decent. Now, that's, that's because he's got no weathering, no, um, none of that stuff on him. As far as, like, the physical, physical detail, I guess you could say, he, it's like 10 out of 10, looks just like the movie. And whatever, except for the cape, the cape is ugly. Cape's really ugly. Be honest, the cape's ugly. So fibrous and everything. You can see the black bleeding through. There you go. You see that? It's all fibrous. You can see the black bleeding through. But yeah, well that that's enough. Of Anyways, moving on to the uh, Black Series General Grievous. Right. So packaging, you can see it's pretty standard for Black Series. You got the um, open window box. Some little, you know, he scrapes his face over here. Red down the side says D1. Send some stuff on the back. Can't read that. I'm assuming it's probably some sort of, like, information about him. And uh, I'm assuming there's a picture of him. Still can't see that. Whatever. This side, uh, don't see nothing. Whatever. Okay, well, that's, oh, uh, wait. <clears throat> right. Here, there's that, so if you want to read that. And, um, I can't see anything, so let's just open up the figure, right? Right, and now with our, uh, Grievous, uh, out of the packaging, well, right off the bat, he already looks different, very different from our, um, Bandai one. And I'm not talking about the head that looks like it's glowing because of, um, the lack of, uh, Washing and matte on there. It's reflecting light, whatever, but you probably already know that. But anyways He um First thing you notice about him that's different from the other Bandai. Um, what? Different from the other Bandai? That's different from the Bandai one is the fact that he looks Worn. He has a bunch of um Washing on him. You can see he's got some like Some scratch and uh, chip work on him Another thing that you notice is uh, his cape. His cape is actually cloth this time. It's not that uh, fibrous material with that fake cap on it. His cape is completely made of cloth. And if we look at it, you can see it's got the pockets or whatever for his lightsaber hilts and stuff. Your lightsaber will make in uh, whatever. You get the, you get the joke. Um, speaking of... If we look at his lightsabers, we can see that they're fully painted and everything. Silver, red, black, um, gold, copper, you know. And it doesn't look like any of them are the same or, you know. But they are still different from um, some of the Bandai ones. Hard to tell given the fact that there's no paint on the Bandai ones, but they are different. They are indeed different. I don't think any of them are actually the same. Except for maybe this one and this one right here. These two. These two look like they're the same. Just, um... These ones, they do look longer. The hilts look a, a little bit longer. Just a tiny bit. I don't know. What about the blades? Let's compare the blades from these. Now, if I'm right, these blades should be removable from... Yep. The blades are removable, and so we take a Bandai one and also remove the blade from there. We can see, wow, that is a really big difference. That is a big difference. Wow. Wow. Another thing I'm kind of curious about is if they're sort of compatible. 
Well, as far as that, that's that's really as far as the Bandai one can go. But can the Bandai can the black go into the Bandai? No. So they're not compatible at all. Period. Um. But yeah. So um, as far as accessories go for this figure, he comes with the cape. He comes with the four lightsabers, as I've shown you. And this time around, he actually comes with a blaster. Which it has a little bit of warping here, but if you look at it, it um, it's got this nice gunmetal um color to it. it. Looks like it's got some silver dry brushing on it or something. It looks it doesn't it doesn't look bad, but eh, fairly standard looking. Whereas the lightsabers actually have um, they have that silver. They have some red coloring for some of the buttons. Some um copper and gold or whatever some black and everything it's nice and all now let's take this cape off of grievous over here um right so all right well that was easy yeah taking a look at you can see the pockets and everything are sewn on to here looks nice and everything this up here is sewn together I was assuming it would be Velcro, but I guess not. Oh, yeah. And, um, the gray outside, the red inside, and they're two separate cloths, as you can see here. Making a massive pocket out of this thing. Pretty interesting. It's, it's, it's really a giant pocket. <laughs> Store his stuff in there if you wanted to. Pretty interesting. Um, right. Well, another thing you notice is the fact that he, unlike the other Grievous, has all his arms in two, I guess. Because if you look at him closely, you can see he's got some pegs, some tabs and everything, some peg holes and tabs. So you can um, actually connect his arms together. Let's see if I can do that right here. Now, I'm not sure if he can actually maintain his art, his full articulation, like this, or... Here we have one of his arms put together, or, oh, well, I guess not put together. Okay, I'll get back when I get his arms together. That was awkward to, uh, to start a friend. Anyway, so, um, well, yeah, I just got his arms together, and something I realized, uh, or something I noticed, which is pretty interesting about this, other than the fact that his arms don't really go together that, that well, um, well, first of all, his arms do hinge when they're put together, just backwards. They don't really hinge forward like they should, but they do hinge backwards. Not good. Um, but, um, you can hinge his arms out, or whatever, when they're put together like that. He, um, has a forearm swivel and a bicep swivel, so you can rotate his joints around to, um, hinge his arms or his elbows like, like that. You can hinge them like that when they're put together. It's just a really awkward um, thing to have him. But um, he can also bring his arms forward. And that does not use the individual joints. He has a second joint up in here in his uh, shoulder. That um, is for both. Which allows him to rotate his arms forward and back. And it seems to be on a ball joint too. So it's kind of like a butterfly joint or whatever. Not exactly, but um, somewhat like that. But so, um, yeah, as far as articulation goes, he's got that ball joint up in there. He's got, um, hinge swivels up here at that, of at each elbow, or not elbow, uh, shoulder. He's got a bicep swivel for each bicep, I guess. He's got a hinge at each elbow. 
uh, rotation at each forearm, nothing in any of the wrists, as you'd expect. He's got a ball joint in the head, and then he's got like a ball joint in the neck as well. Oh, one thing I really, I, one thing I like and dislike at the same time about this Grievous is if you look at his ears, they are soft plastic, but they're. So as I was saying before, um, I got so rudely cut out, his ears or whatever, I'm not, I'm not really sure what you call them, but they're soft plastic, which is good because they don't snap like the other Grievous, <clears throat> but um, they're not just soft plastic, they're super soft plastic, so they do warp fairly easily and whatever, but eh, it's better than being broken, right? Really? Let, let's get into articulation, as a matter of fact. So, um, as you know, he's got uh, ball joint in the head. Allows him to look up that far with it, just with it alone. It's pretty good. Down that far. It's, it's, wow. Really far sideways, side to side. Uh, doesn't really get quite, a, quite much of a head tilt. And then he's got the neck. Which, you know, you can use them together to give him, get him into a, like, a hunched position, standing up straight position. It's pretty good, honestly. The other, um, the other Grievous only has a ball joint in the, ne in the head, which isn't really all that. It's much more limited than this guy. Um, when his arms are put together, really all he has is a hinge at the elbow. Uh, da, 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 da hinge and um, swivel at the shoulder it's technically a ball joint but you don't really get much out of it other than the swivel um, when their arms are separated you get a hinge and swivel at the elbow at the sh uh, shoulder a semi butterfly joint swivel at the um, bicep hinge at hinge at the uh, elbow and swivel at the forearm you get, what is this, a ball joint? Yeah, I think it's a ball joint at the, um, the, the waist. Ball joints at the hips, which allows you to kick out that far, not very far. Forward, well that far, which is very far. Back, not so much, depending on how you pose it. This being soft plastic, it doesn't really get in the way much. You can just kick that all the way back. Double hinged knees, which gets you... Gets you... Not that far. You know, allows you to touch the back of his leg to his uh, the back of his thigh, which is pretty freaking far. Um, another thing about this Grievous, unlike the other Grievous, is that he can actually stand up straight. Although that doesn't really give him high points. Um, here at the, what I call the hawk, you can get about 90. And then he's got a, a, what's, it, what's this called again? Hinge swivel. Hinge and a swivel. No ankle rocker, really, at all. So, but, uh, you know, it's grievous, we don't really need that. Um, let's get some height comparison with these guys. So we got the um, black series over there. We got the uh, da, 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 the Bandai over here. It's pretty obvious which one's taller, or really, I should say, proportionately larger, because the Bandai's chest area is much, much um, larger, I guess. How tall are these guys exactly? Uh, Bandai stands at about um, like seven and a half, seven, seven and like three quarters inches, depending on how you have his. Remember that um, little neck bit I told you about? From like seven and a half to seven and a three quarters, while the um, the uh, Black Series stands about like seven to seven and a quarter. So, they're really not that tall, 
Well, this one isn't really all that tall. They are taller figures, but this fig for example, this figure stands just about under seven inches. So really when it comes to like the scale or whatever, I prefer the Bandai over the uh, Black Series. Now, if I were just um, a collector and I was just looking for a Grievous, a Grievous that is like, you know, 112 scaled or about there, I'd, I'd go with the Black Series because um, he is meant to be cheaper. Now, as far as I know, he is not sold in stores. That is as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, he's not sold in stores. But he runs about um, uh, $29.99. While the Bandai stands at like 40, I think 43, something. So yeah, there is a bit of a price difference between there. About like, you know, 10 bucks. That number is definitely wrong, but yeah. At least 10 bucks difference between the guys. And um, if I were someone who um, cares only about details... But, uh, how do I put this? Well, like, judging the two, each of them has their, has more detail than the other in their own ways. This Grievous has more details than that Grievous in, like, the paintwork. This Grievous has more details than that Grievous in the, um, I would say, yeah, I guess the mold work. Uh, 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 when it when it comes down to um recommendations, honestly, I don't know where I stand. Both Grievous has actually hold up. Alright, never mind. I was thinking that he had something in his chest, like some sort of like function, because his chest is a little, uh, I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's warped, I guess. His chest is warped. Um, one thing about this Grievous that um, even with the uh, like the paint work and everything, some of the washes he's got on him, which really looks nice on the chest area. Uh, he could use a little more washing on his face. I do like the uh, little metal um, chipping and stuff. The knees look all right. The shins could use a little bit. Um, if you look if you look around him, like on his back, on his shoulders, he doesn't really have any paint on it, which is unfortunate because he does have like um, if you look scratches and cracks and stuff in his armor or body, whatever. Which you know it could be brought brought out with a wash, but now you see this. The Bandai Grievous doesn't have any of those. It doesn't have any paintwork whatsoever, and it does not have any um, any of those cracks or scratches on him at all. So when it comes to detailing, it really depends on um, what you prefer: paint jobs or like having having the um, physical detailing in there. Because as far as that goes, the paintwork goes for this, the Black Series, while the, uh, the sculpt work goes towards the Bandai. It also, like, recommendation, to, it really depends on um, budget and preference, in this case. Budget and preference. I can't recommend either or uh, without, uh, I don't know how to put this, but like, Neither figure is for everyone. Neither figure is for everyone. It depends on what you like. If you prefer to have a good, like a, a well-painted figure or whatever, then I'd say then stick with the, um, the Black Series, because it's cheaper, it's got um, slightly better, you know, like, paint jobs. I, it's got some mold work in there that uh, the other one doesn't, but it's not really too noticeable if you prefer to have um a more accurate like movie accurate uh 
figure to, to fit in scale with um, nice like detailing or whatever or mold work then go with the, the Bandai except he's you know more price he's pricier and more pricey or whatever he's more expensive and then there's also the factor of like the capes and the uh, accessories and whatnot speaking of accessories I haven't really tried this with them I haven't tried the blaster Can he hold the blaster? I guess that answers our question. Pew! But yeah, um, let me know in the comment section which one you guys prefer. Which one you guys um, would recommend to a friend? If you had these guys, what do you think about them? What would you do if you had them? Like, you know, would you paint them up? Like, what, 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 you know, this, these types of things. Oh, yeah, getting back to that recommendation. The Bandai one's more fragile, too. Huh. It almost seems like it's in favor of the... Uh, black series, but yet the I like the Bandai's detailing more personally I Can't choose either or like I'm just a really big fan of Grievous. I like both figures. They have their own um, their own Like this one has they have their own perks or whatever, you know So let me know what which one you guys prefer which one you would recommend to a friend if you have them what would you do to uh, to improve either or whatever you know? And till next time, this has been the one and only, and I'll see you guys later.